It's, it's, it's Bobby, and we back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth podcast. What's your favorite beating man? The one, the only, Bobby. Today on the show, I got my man Cam Nisbet. What's going on? Hey, man. How are you? I'm doing great. How you doing? Doing well. Welcome to the Purpose in the Youth podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm super stoked to have you here now for the fact, knowing that what we were just talking about before we even fired these up, you heard episode 22 with gibson hazard yeah you were working at a papa john was it papa john's or papa gino's papa john's papa john's in missouri yep and that's just crazy to me to yeah. think that when that came out pretty much a year ago now you're out in missouri just working a job trying to whatever whatever the podcast was doing for you maybe give you some motivation maybe give you some insight on what gibson's doing straight up and now we're here in la yep. and you're out here living now yeah and it's full circled it's it's crazy yeah it's Honestly, the craziest thing ever. Yeah. Um. So I used to go to school, this place called Truman State University okay. in Kirksville, Missouri. It was about like 3,000 kids. Super small. Yeah. Like literally the only thing to do there is go to Walmart and like- <laughs> Just screw around? Yeah, that's it. Like there wasn't really much to do. So I was working at this Papa John's and this was around the time where like Gibson was working with Kyle. Yeah. And uh, I saw his podcast and I was like, man, I really want to be a shooter. Like- that seems really cool. And I had always had interest in it, but I just never really committed. Hmm. And then he gave away the, the tips <laughs> and the, and the <laughs> he secrets. Was dropping, he dropped away some gems. <laughs> he I dropped that. some knowledge. And I was like, all right, this is what I got to do. So now I'm here. That is so crazy. Yeah. Yo, that's like so crazy to me that, that that's how this, how that almost pinpoint, that got you into it more or gave oh, yeah. you insight as to what his thought process For was sure. and now you're able to do it and you're doing it today. Definitely. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm so pumped now for this podcast. Yo, I'm pumped too. I'm like low key fanning out over here. <laughs> uh, let's start it up though. Who, yeah. who is Cam Nisbet today and how young is he? I am 20. I just turned 20. Just turned 20? Um, like last week. That's dope. Yeah. Have um, you bladed? Thank you. Happy bladed. Appreciate that, bro. Yeah. For real. I'm a music photographer. Yep. Um, help my my boy Justin out with his vlogs. And you're like a star of the show for that, pretty I, much. Man, you know just, not, you don't have to admit it, but I, you're definitely a star of the show. We just mess One around of the stars. and have fun. Yeah. And, uh, it's a good time, but all around just a hustler. So you grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, or was it outside of St. Louis? St. Louis, Missouri, yeah. Just, well, I guess like St. Louis County technically, but like you can recognize St. Louis, so that's where I'm okay. from. Okay. I've never been there. I'm yeah. sure somebody that listens to this has never been there. What stands out about St. Louis, Missouri? What's that place like? Man, um, Emo's. Okay. It's a fire pizza place. Fire pizza. Yeah. The best, best in the it's, country? It's the best in the game, okay. in my opinion. Um, what else about St. Louis is there? It's like a you're pretty- You're like dead center of the country. Yeah. Dead center. It's pretty like your, your stereotypical, like just n it's a normal place. Yeah. It's very normal. It's like not- crazy there's not really a whole lot to do but hmm. i mean you can pop out to a baseball game a hockey game whatever like yeah. we used to have the rams yeah oh that must have been a tough time to see i that. mean it was and then i moved here and i was like well it doesn't oh. even matter anymore because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it worked out well whatever but no st louis is a good place to to grow up i'm, I'm really thankful that um i lived there yeah. and experienced like a good portion of my life there like, I, I learned a lot being in in that environment yeah and um yeah. Any brothers, sisters? I have a little brother. Little brother? Yeah, little TJ. Little Timothy. TJ? How much younger? Uh, we're eight years apart. Oh, that's... Okay, that's a gap then. Yeah. So he looks up to you. Yeah. You're out living in LA now. He's oh, probably yeah. in, thinking, what What am I going to do? What am I supposed oh, yeah. to do? I mean, I look up to him, man. Like, straight up. Um, everything I do is for my family and for my little brother. And I, I want to make that kid proud. And, yeah. Like, make it for him so that he can do what he wants to do, like, in the, in the easiest way possible. So if I make a connect out here... And he has an interest in something that I happen to know a person involved with. Yeah. It's like, boom, here you go, kid. Yeah, I got you. Do your dance. <laughs> How was your relationship with your parents growing up? It was good. Um, it got a that, little... That <laughs> <laughs> got me a little nervous about yeah. what we're about to get into. Um, it, it was good overall. Overall, okay. great experience. Love my parents. <laughs> <laughs> great experience. Great experience. 10 out of 10 would recommend my parents for parents. Highly recommend on Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> great reviews overall. <laughs> um but no nah, so it, it wasn't always perfect you know um yeah. everything was cool i was a really big sports kid hmm. i was a really big sports kid and i felt as if i had to be an incredible athlete for anyone to really like accept me 
Hmm. I was really always into art, like low key, just very low key, just kind of did it on the side, never really like paid attention to it. But the big thing to do was play sports. All my family like played basketball and uh, that, that was my dream. That was my hmm. goal was like to go to the league straight up to play basketball yes so like oh, wow. go to the nba was like my passion mm. and then uh eventually it just really wasn't that, that wasn't. anymore and during that whole stage of me like really figuring out what i wanted to do in this isn't like high school yeah okay um in like art related things it was just really rocky hmm. it was uh i was getting into some some not responsible activities some some very sketchy extracurriculars can you talk about it i can just... talk about it okay. I, i'll own up to it um i was just hanging out with the wrong people just smoking weed like yeah. lying sneaking out whatever you know just normal like yeah teenage stuff i get that um but it just caused a lot of strife between to my family because they myself. saw what you're doing they understood you're not supposed to be doing this yeah and obviously you say i'm not gonna do it anymore and you're yeah. sneaking out and oh, causing yeah. issues um there was a lot of issues bro and then uh eventually things got settled down um everything was fine and i, I figured it out i was like man this photography stuff it, like makes me feel normal yeah like this this is the one time when i'm doing something that i can just kick back mm -hmm. and just truly be in a moment yeah and enjoy myself and what i'm doing yeah and then ever since then they've supported me seen that i'm passionate about it yeah and, and haven't had a problem since then yeah i see that's yeah. it, it that's good and obviously you know i think all kids i think everybody goes through that phase in when they're growing up where they're doing the things their parents don't want them to do oh yeah and you almost have to go through that phase in order to finally come out and then find like the photography and find the passion and absolutely then actually get them to to understand you right was there any other big obviously that relationship yeah. where, you know had its ups and downs like every sure. you know father yeah um mother son relationship but were there any other like big struggles that you faced personally as a kid oh yeah man um my not necessarily in my childhood okay my childhood was pretty tight okay like i thrived in middle school you're killing it elementary school was chill yeah and then high school is honestly a really tough time for me hmm. um my junior year i was like very depressed extremely depressed and very anxious i couldn't eat like at lunch with other kids because i just didn't know how to relate to other people and uh you're still and you're still playing basketball at this time yeah i'm still i'm still hooping. So you're, I'm still you're playing an athlete football. at yeah. the school yeah okay i had the persona of like a popular kid or whatever but on the inside i was like so conflicted because i didn't know like how to talk to people about like normal stuff yeah i didn't i didn't know how to to get along with them and it was uh it was a really difficult time for me and uh i developed a stronger bond with with my uncle paul he's a crazy photographer like the most talented dude like mm -hmm. i my inspiration straight up and um my goal is probably to be be better than him oh yeah so Ooh, he, uncle he, paul i hope he's listening he drives me a lot man but um no in that time it was just a really big struggle i, I was i was sad a lot didn't really know what i was doing yeah and eventually i kind of just stopped listening to everyone else and of them telling you what you should what be doing. i should be doing and this is what i have to be doing and this is where i should go to school and these are the things that i should be involved in these are the people i should hang out with these are the girls i should date like i was not living my own life hmm. and then eventually i was like man what the hell am i doing like yeah Let's just be happy. Yeah. Let's just make our own decisions. Yeah. Like, what is Cam? I'm like old doing? enough. What is Cam? Yeah. What I'm like, Cam man, I'm do? 17 years old, and I'm still letting people like influence my every single decision. Um. So after I, it was just a mental switch. Yeah. I, I was going. I was on all these meds. I was. Really? So all oh, these, this was this was like this a, was serious, a serious. This thing. isn't a depression as I just felt low. Like you were no, trying. This was like straight up. Wow. Just just bad. Um. I was going through all this stuff, going going to all these doctor's appointments and all these medications, and nothing seemed to be helping until one day I literally looked at myself in the mirror and was like, bro, you're what everyone else wants you to be. Be yourself. Be yeah. who you are. Figure it out for you because you want to do it. Yeah. Not because your parents want you yeah. to do it. Not because your, your brother wants you to do it. Not because your homies want you to do it. Because you want to be 
the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's when that's when the switch turned. That's when the I mean depression just doesn't go away. Yeah. But that's when it just you start gradually to, Yeah, you, yeah. You have, it's baby steps, right? Yeah, it just gradually got better. It started with a simple thing. Like I'd wake up, first thing I'd do is watch cartoons. Hmm. Simple. Ease your way in. Just Ease simple your way thing. into the day. Yeah. And then I kinda got into guitar a little bit. Would like draw a little bit. Okay. And I would skateboard and like just do things that interested I you. was interested in. Yeah, yeah. And then that eventually led me into photography. So what was it about photography? Uh, man, I went to a G Easy show. G Easy, okay. Yeah. So my uncle Paul is friends with Dusty Kessler, who's one of G's mm -hmm. photographers. They worked in the same office. Oh, that's that's crazy how this is gonna. Yeah. I already see how this is all gonna connect. <laughs> yeah, then okay, it, it's wild. Uh, so G was he was having a show in St. Louis. My uncle was like, "Yo, I can lace you with some tickets through Dusty if if you're trying to go." I was like, "Man, absolutely." I'd like never really been to a concert before this either. Hmm. So at all, yeah. Okay. Um, I pull up to the show, and Dusty hooks me up. Whatever. Like we don't even really know each other. He uh, got me a meet and greet pass. To, Amazing. To meet G and like the team or whatever, and I was just I was tweaking. <laughs> I was in that line like just shaking, like I'm so about to meet nervous. G. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Gerald! Holy crap! <laughs> um, but I remember meeting him, and a part of me was like, man, this is this is not really as satisfying as I I thought it was gonna be. It was really dope meeting him. We shook hands, took a picture, whatever. But that was like, that was that. I knew he was. There wasn't... was nothing that was gonna come out out yeah. of that. And you probably thought, "G's gonna want to be my friend. G's yeah. gonna like, oh for sure, take my photos and post them." Absolutely. I was like, man, we're we're gonna be homies now because I know Dusty and like yeah. everything's gonna be tight. But no, nah, that just wasn't the case. No. Um. So the show starts. I'm in the pit. Um. I snuck my way up there. Actually, love it. Didn't have pit tickets. Love I just it. like shook hands with the security guards and they're like okay you're, you're cool go ahead hop yeah in. they they saw the uh the meet and greet sticker and i guess whatever yeah that just like let them through yeah um so i'm up there and this girl comes up to me and was like do you even like Jeezy? you don't belong here she was from my school and i was like okay all right i'm gonna sit here and act like i didn't i didn't hear that and i just remember thinking the entire show this experience as a fan is cool but i feel like the way i'm experiencing this show is through a completely different lens and i saw grady brandon and i saw dusty working and i was like man that's what i want to be doing i want to be giving people the experience that i'm receiving mm. I'm, that I'm, aren't able to go to these shows yes, yes and live it through the photos yes and now i'm going to be a shooter that's what i want to do this huh. this is the next thing i'm going to do and I'm going to commit and I'm going to fully send it. And that was the moment where I was like, yeah, I think this photography thing. So then what kind of, what, what was like the next step? So you have that moment when you realize, you know, this yep. is what I want to do. This is exactly where, how I'm going to go. I want to create these, these images that, you know, people can live through. Yeah. What was the next step in the game plan? So the next step after that, uh, I just reached out to all these photographers that I started following on Instagram, my grandma, Hmm. and grandpa bought me my first camera for for christmas you were stoked i was so amped yeah i was so i tweeted at my favorite photographer at the time i was like yo i'm gonna be just like you one day <laughs> i swear bro i'm gonna be like you um <laughs> but nah so people hit me back with advice like on how to like get into music photography or whatever and at this point in time it wasn't cool like it was almost it was almost like you were weird if you were a music photographer hmm. or even a photographer slash videographer in general. Like it wasn't cool at we're the time. Eighteen at the time? I was seventeen. Seventeen still? Okay. Yeah. And a piece of advice that a friend gave me was to hit up like small local bands mm -hmm. and just shoot them and practice. So I shot this dude named Aaron Krauss, I believe. He opened up for this band called the Madison Letter. And it was in a basement. Love it. Yeah. Uh, on my little Rebel with a kit lens. And I was just tearing it up. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm just, sick. I'm, in, I'm out here. I'm here. I'm a music photographer now. Yeah. Like, I'm so dope. Updated the IG bio. Yeah. I swear. <laughs> I didn't even know how to shoot manual. Like, I was in aperture priority, like, sport mode at a concert. You're just going whatever. I was just doing it because yeah, yeah. it was fun. And then I remember uh, both of them had, had posted my photos, like, the following day. I was like, yes. 
That's so cool. That's yes. like a pat on your back. Oh yeah, that like, the photo was good enough. Here I am. Um, I'm 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 in now. Yeah, they were so butt though. All the photos were so butt. But anyway, the band that that played after Aaron. I stayed in contact with them and they were opening for the plain white tees like maybe a month later mm-hmm. and I was just a nice guy and I was like hey if, if it's cool can I come through and shoot you guys for um for the show before the white tee or the plain white tees they're like yeah yeah come through do your dance whatever yeah. so I, I went through shot that show and then I shot the plain white tees after that uh-huh. and they're not really like Hey there, Delilah is one of the greatest songs Huge. Of, of, of ever. Huge. It's, it's a great song. If you don't song. know that song, I'm actually really surprised. <laughs> For real. Uh, so I shot that show, and they ended up posting my work. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe I'm like pretty good at this. Maybe I should like keep keep going. going. Keep I should going. probably keep going because mm-hmm. it, it feels good when people recognize that I'm, I'm decent. Like, yeah. All right. Let, let's, They're posting your work. Yeah, that is like, literally the best case scenario for let's, you. Let's get it popping. Here we go. Um, so after that, it was just, there, there wasn't really any shows. Like I didn't understand quite yet, like how to get into concerts. Yeah. Like, how to really shoot the people that I wanted to work with. So I was just taking self portraits, like on a tripod and a timer. And I got really raw at like taking pictures of myself because no one at my school really wanted to shoot. Like it was mm. kind of weird at the time. And I just kept growing. You had to use yourself to literally yes. learn. That's crazy. So yes. set up the, the camera. Press the button, run, run out, out in front of and it. And just hold like a pose. Like, hit one of these boys <laughs> and then pop back. Wow. <laughs> and then do that like 30 times wow. until I caught one that worked. So where did you in, where did you say you went to school? I went to Truman State. Okay. Yeah. So you went to Truman State. What was the plan going there because you already have the photography kind of going it seems like this is what i want to do yeah was going to school more of because my parents wanted me to yeah 100 percent. oh absolutely so how was the experience there uh because you're not there anymore no (laughs) clearly (laughs) um whenever i was in high school I i was a big football guy i played football because i was good at it and people recognized me as a great athlete and it was cool to like have some clout off of a sport. That's what it's all about in high school. Yeah. And I was getting a lot of like college attention. Um, but none of my like big division one offers ever really came through. And Truman State was the one school that was like, yo, if you need a place to play, here you go, man. Come on through. Just come on. We got you with the scholarship, whatever you need, but we know you're going to do like bigger things, but if nothing happens, just call us. Hmm. I end up calling them. I commit, whatever. Um, and I pull up there and I, I get there and I remember thinking like, oh no, shouldn't have done this. <laughs> this is a bad idea from the rip. What was it about? It was just small town. Yeah. The sm- smallest like of yeah. small. And uh, you realize that it's high school point 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing. You go out every weekend, you see the same people, you yeah. do the same thing every day, go to the same classes. It's yeah um so i'm playing ball everything's okay like football season was rough for me personally because you go from being a the top dog in high school and then you get to college and you're no longer really relevant yeah you're just the bottom feeder again yeah and that sucks you gotta work your way up yeah so i got some minutes um did pretty well hmm. i dropped the only touchdown pass i could have caught the entire season <laughs> that still bites me to this day it's gonna bite you for the rest of your life right yeah and then after the season was over i was like all right no way i'm staying here any longer than i have to i need to get out asap hmm. just i need to get out whatever way i can so during this time period i was working with an artist named anthony russo yep and him and I had been working since I really like started the photography thing. How did you guys connect? I just hit him up on Instagram. Love it. I saw one of his songs on on Twitter, and uh, DM'd him because I knew I wanted to work with an artist like exclusively. And mm-hmm. I was like, "Yo, man, like your stuff. Um, if you want to shoot one day, let me know. Let's hang you out. guys are close proximity cities. Yeah, okay. we were like twenty minutes from each other. Like one, twenty okay. minutes drive. Perfect. Um, ended up clicking. Talked about some really deep and like heavy stuff the first day. And uh, just hung out every single day after that. Just literally every day. Hmm. And I would bring my camera. Some, di- some days I would shoot. Some days I wouldn't. But I would always 
leave from hanging out with him feeling like I learned something that I could apply to my own life. And he was a, he was a big mentor to me in a sense, just really taught me a lot. Um, so back to back to school, um, still working with Anthony, like here and there doing what I can from a distance, like trying to graphic design or like whatever. And they end up moving to LA and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> There's my only hope. These but, are the people that I connected with yeah. that I was able I'm able to learn from and now they're moving out. Yeah. So the artist that I was with is now in a completely different state for me. Mm. I don't necessarily know what I'm gonna do, but I know that I'm gonna make it work one way or another. So uh This has gotta be twenty sixteen yep, probably. Yep. Okay. About that about that time frame. Uh go get the job with Papa John's and then Every single weekend, I would try to go shoot someone or something anywhere outside of Kirksville, Missouri. So I never told my parents this, actually, but I texted Anthony's manager who knew Gibson. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, Gibson on, Gibson's on tour with Kyle. Do you think he could lob me a pass for a show? Drove six hours to Chicago, shot one show with him there, and then six hours back to Kirksville next weekend, drove three hours to Kansas, shot Kyle again, drove, drove back. And then the following weekend drove like six hours to Arkansas to shoot Kyle again. No, it was a, uh, I think okay. it was big Sean. I was supposed to shoot, but it like got rained out or whatever, but I was just driving somewhere every single weekend to meet with people and to shoot some sort of live event. Hmm. It didn't really matter who it was. I was just trying to like get better. Hmm. And, and that was really driving me at the time. Hmm. Um, so it, it got to the point where I'm not going to class anymore because I'm in the media lab all day trying to like figure out how to edit new ways. And I just wasn't going to school. It, I, I was wasting my time. Hmm. I was a business. This is your sophomore year, essentially? Yeah. Or were you still freshman, freshman, freshman So year. spring or like freshman kind yeah, of? Yeah. Uh, I was like, man, this is not good. I'm definitely going to like fail everything if I don't get it in gear. I go to my guidance counselor's office. I'm like, hey, I want to be a photographer. What can you do to help me? He said, honestly, there's nothing we can do for you here. You should probably transfer. Okay. Bet. <laughs> awesome. He said, well, what I can do in the meantime is put you in like photography classes, like art classes, all that kind of stuff. Um, just to spark your interest a little more. Yeah. That didn't even work. I failed a photography class, no. bro. I straight no, up. No, the one class that is supposed to be yep. your golden arches of this is where I need to be. You yeah, failed it. I failed it. Why? I don't know. There's something about creating when it comes from yourself and when it comes from your spirit and it comes from you. Yeah. And then there's also something about you need to go take a landscape so you can get an A and your GPA is better. Yeah. And I just you have to follow the it. guidelines. You yeah. have to follow the guidelines. You don't want to follow guidelines. Like, no, I'm not trying to follow your rules. I'm gonna shoot what I want to shoot. I don't. I don't really want to go shoot. shoot a concert landscape. <laughs> yeah, and use that straight up. Um, yeah. So me and my photography professor were just not vibing at all. Wow. And I ended up failing that class. So it it came it came around to the point where I was needing to figure something out. Like I'm not doing good in school. I got fired from Papa John's because I was going somewhere every weekend. I, I had no, I had no money. I'm just at this point. I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Like, I'm really stuck now. This yeah. is not good. Call my parents. I was like, look, I was stuck actually an hour and a half away from my school, coming back from shooting Anthony because I ran out of gas and I didn't have money to get back. So I call my parents. I'm like, yo. I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. There is no point in me like trying to finish the semester because I'm failing all my classes. Mm. My mom's like, well, what are you gonna do? What's your plan? I said, I'm gonna come home. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna buy a new camera and I'm gonna move to LA. <laughs> she said, what? Are you crazy? Like, is that is that what you're gonna do? I was like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So my mom was really cool with it. Got pops on the phone. Nah, just a big nah. Told him the exact same thing. I was like, Dad, I was trembling. 
on the phone. I bet. I was Your kidding. father was the one that you you had to, it was, the, it, there's always oh, one. It's yeah. either the mother or the father is oh, going to yeah. be the tough one. That's why father. I called my mom first. first. <laughs> um, called my dad and he's just not really excited about his son losing a football scholarship to the Harvard of the Midwest or whatever Truman's called. And uh, sure enough, I go home, they wire me like a hundred dollars. They don't use Venmo or cash app. So they like <laughs> literally wired me like a hundred bucks and packed up all my stuff. And I dipped, it was like three weeks before the semester was supposed to end, but there was no point in me being there. Cause, yeah, cause I, you knew you were out. I wasn't going to pass. So I go home. It was really rough for like the first few days. Just, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know like the most optimal job. I didn't know how I was going to make any money. All I knew was that I needed a new camera and that I needed to get to Los Angeles, California. And I was going to do that one way or another. Hmm. Um, my mom owns a senior home care business and was like, yo, I can give you a job. This is what you have to do. You just have to go to this old woman's house and take care of her for 12 hours. And that's your job. So I worked from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Oh, so it was the overnights. Yeah. Four nights a week every week for like my entire summer and then on the weekends i would still pop to like iowa to go shoot migos and i'd pop over to ohio to shoot like g at this festival and i'd, I'd do this the midwest you really gotta travel around to you get to these big shows to go somewhere it's like, not like being in la you could go down to santa Ana or you could go to yeah. orange county it's like an hour max you're driving five six hours just oh, yeah. to shoot one show yeah 40 minute set yeah Honestly, it was always the first three songs, and you're kicked. Yeah. So I'm driving anywhere from five to eight hours just to shoot three songs and then get kicked out. And go right back. And just go go back to what I was doing. And I was happy as can be. You yeah. couldn't tell me anything. You were thrilled man. driving I was to, just like, to the Here show. Here we go. I'm going to go shoot Wiz Khalifa this weekend. This is going to be a great time. All like, by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I started making friends in the music photography like mm -hmm. industry. That would like you'd see the same faces at the at the shows, right? Yeah, and they would lay me up whenever I would travel out of town. So my parents were like, "Who are you staying with?" Like, oh, my homie Mason. Mason, and, yeah. let's go. Yeah, Should that's I, the boy yeah. for real. <laughs> that's the homie. Mason Castillo. That's a whole crazy story in itself. Man, that is that's unbelievable. Yeah. What was it about your relationship with Anthony? Mm -hmm. You know, you you said that you guys would get into these deep conversations. Uh, you know, he obviously he moves out to L.A., then you eventually move out there. But what was it about Anthony that impacted you the most? So he was just a hustler, man. That That's what really struck my interest. He was a hustler but didn't complain about it and was so happy doing it. Hmm. He worked at a car wash and would take all his tip money and use it for studio time. And that that's just that's just how he rocked. He brought me everywhere with him, like music video shoots studio time like dinner with the family like whatever it was he just really made me feel like i was part of something and on top of that he was reading all these books and i never was a big reader for real like i just didn't interest me mm -hmm. and he was just dropping little knowledge just little gems, little, little <laughs> gems just some little gems every time we hung out and i was like man i really do have the power to like control my life and go in the direction that I would like to go in with just a little bit of hard work and like some sacrifice and I'll be cool eventually. If I do this for X amount of time, eventually it's going to work and you are living proof of that. Hmm. So I'm going to take what you have to say like pretty seriously because I see how it's working for you. Yeah. And yeah, it was just very, he was like a big brother for real. Yeah. Still is to this day. Still is to this day. He's got a show tonight in L.A. In L.A. I yeah. know. That's crazy. You're looking at three shows. They're sold out in sold L.A. Out. He's supporting g -Eazy. So as soon as you start, you know, talking about g -Eazy in the beginning, I'm like, this is now all yeah. this is. It's just full of circles, it's which which amazes me. Super weird. The first show I shot, I think there was like 12 people in this venue. Yeah. Um, For Anthony. Yeah. And I think six of them were like his family members. <laughs> It was just a basement. Yeah. And he killed it. Yeah. And I had the best time ever. And now seeing him on like a big stage, his whole name is on an LED screen. It's like. You appreciate it. Yeah. You were there to see that full. Definitely. Full, full circle. And then I reflect on myself and what I'm doing. Like, dang, I put myself in this position too, to where I've developed this relationship with him. 
so that I can shoot his show, but I've also developed all these other relationships with a bunch of other people so I can shoot whoever yeah. now. It's you're not to, relying it's on just one. Nah, you're not just relying on him to do a show to shoot. Yeah. Now it's become, I yeah. have all these people. Oh, there's a festival. Let me see if I can text, blah, blah. Let yep. me see if they're going to be going, oh, not this person, yeah. and go to the next one. And then you're in. Yeah. It's just. You got to build that network. That's very important. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most important thing you can do, like, in any entrepreneurial, like, venture. It's yeah. just expand your network and let it happen naturally. I was just going to say that. I think a lot of kids see, like, whoever on social media or whatever and like really try hard to like make that connection and i understand why you would want to do that like you want you want to be sense. doing that you, you want, want to be, be doing, doing that that's like, it's good to like seek um but I, I, the best relationships happen when you just end up running into someone it's yeah. like oh you're this guy oh hey what's up man nice to meet you yeah cool see you later you might not see him for six months but you see him six months later they mm -hmm. might not even remember you yeah but you remember them yeah you see them go say what's up oh i saw you at this place okay cool maybe you don't even see him for eight months the next time yeah oh you're that kid from they, yeah, they start yeah, to yo. pick up on it yeah what's up man and then that's just how relationships develop yeah and that's just how it's it's got to be it's a tough process it is you have to warm it up and I always say you have to give people value without yeah. asking for shit in return. Mm -hmm. So, you know, always. it takes time. You know, there's relationships that I'm still working on this day that I, I see somebody that I, I think that's who I want to get on a podcast. But it's just it's timing, right? Yep. Relationships, timing, it it, it all comes together. Yeah. The move to out, move to out to L.A. Yep. How was that process for you? Rough. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough. Um. So to make my money, I didn't really get into specifics on my job. Hmm. I had to massage an old woman's back every night hmm. to make enough money to get a camera and then support myself when I moved here. My parents were, were awesome. My uncle was awesome. They both helped me in like getting some new equipment or whatever. But for the most part, like they wanted you to do it. Yeah, I, I did a lot of work. And to just save up that entire summer. Yeah. Knowing that you were going to be moving to L.A. Yep. And this is last summer? Yep. So 2017 summer. Yep. Oh, so this is we moved out here at the same exact time. Yeah. Um so man, I was I was amped. Like every day I was on the cold shower, like listening to music first thing, like running every day, eating right, doing yeah. good for myself. Because my you saw the and, date, you saw the date you were yeah, even moving. I was just hustling for it and mm. nothing was gonna get in my way. I reached that goal, I got here and I was like, whoa yeah now what it's a beast of a city now what i am the smallest fish in a really big ocean yeah and i'm not exactly sure what i'm doing here yeah. right now um so i originally moved out here with anthony mm -hmm. and i was in i was in that house i was working with them uh every day yeah uh, just going to studio sessions whatever just trying to be his guy stay with that yeah, energy yeah, and build content energy. give him content when he needs it yeah absolutely and uh it just didn't really end up working out like the dynamic of four dudes that are all on an individual hustle you know tall's his producer so he's always in the studio all day every day anthony the musician who's also in the studio but like he's he's working with other uh writers and producers and whatnot and then you have Ryan, his manager, who's he's also always just, there. He's just on his own hustle, too. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, like, I didn't know what to do besides take photos. And I can flip and dip photos in 45 minutes. Yeah. And after that, it's like, now what? Yeah. Now what am I doing with my time? Yeah. And we're still great friends. Like, yeah, I was talking to him earlier today. Everything, yeah. everything is totally fine. There's yeah. no bad blood. There's nothing. It just wasn't really working out. Um, so then I ended up. Moving in with Justin. Justin Escalona. Yeah. Justin <laughs> Escalona. With the, the who, who was episode 20 of the podcast. He was, I don't know if I've, if he, he probably knows, knows it just looking at what was previous, but he was a big turning point for me yeah. as a podcast project mm -hmm. because uh, he was somebody that I had gotten on by a friend of a friend that yeah. hooked it up, Noah. And to me, coming out to LA, he, was somebody that I was aspiring to, or he was somebody that I was dreaming of getting on the podcast because yeah. he clearly had his own brand moving and 
he was doing his own vlogs and to me it was like a dream come true to get yeah. somebody like him who was actually doing it. Yeah. Uh, and that was super dope to have him on for the 20th episode. How has working with him helped you as a creative? Man, it's been the best thing that's, that's yeah. like ever happened. Because he works with a camera too. So, I mean, yeah. that, that automatically. You just learn by being there yeah. straight up. Like, yo, record this for me real quick. And you figure out like how to get things in frame and like how to record things in certain frames per second. And... There's so much behind the scenes. Yeah. I, I, uh. Yeah. And uh, that dude has taught me so much yeah. without telling me what to do. Directly. It's just conversations we have. And I'm like, whoa. I, Holy crap. Yeah. I just learned so much by just talking to you. He's a hustler. Yeah. Real, real big hustler. And um, I guess by being such natural friends. Yeah. Like the first time I met Justin... How did you guys meet? Yeah, so that was probably that was last year in January. Okay. So that's when I did the podcast with him. Yeah, that's crazy. That's like roughly around this. I so you, actually you, think we did, hung out for the first time, then the next week you guys did the podcast together. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you had you had came out to visit Anthony yep. and them. No. 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 Nah. So I was in St. Louis. My boy, JP, he's like one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. They had ended up connecting in LA a previous time. And Justin's from Chicago. Yep. And I think Justin hit up JP and was like, yo, you should come to Chicago if you want to like kick it. So me and JP just oh, so you hopped in the car, drove six hours. Classic. Once again, you guys just driving around. Yeah. I ended up meeting up with him. And I knew who this man was. Like, I knew what he was doing. I knew what he was capable of and i knew how hard he was working but when i met him i was like oh what do you do what what what's up <laughs> you try to hack i was him. just like oh yeah i'm, I'm cool too <laughs> look um i get but, that though some because you don't sometimes people yeah. don't want to be too aggressive be like dude i love your vlogs <laughs> absolutely I love, you want to play the yeah it's take like, it easy role tell me about yourself chill. Yeah. yeah i was just asking him questions like what he did and whatever and then we ended up going into denny's and we were both really big sports kids in high school. So we just made locker room jokes for like an hour and a half at Denny's at three in the morning in Chicago. <laughs> and that one interaction was like the biggest thing ever because it just developed a relationship. Yeah. And then after that, we'd keep in touch and whatever. I come to L.A. a couple of times over the summer. We'd hang out. And then uh, eventually it's like, yo, why don't you just move in with us? Wow. It's like, all right. <laughs> I'm definitely down. And you for love that. it, yeah. Because I mean, he's still in school at USC, so you're still getting that. You're still around the college atmosphere. Yep. You're out here in LA working with people that you wanted to work with. Yeah. And what I think is super important for not even just as a creative in photography and video, but with him putting out these daily vlogs, that is literally forcing you guys to to create these vlogs. Although it is Justin Escalona's project, yep. you know, daily docs, and he's the one that's producing it. Yeah. You have clearly become such an important role to it because sure. there'll be times where you could tell you're holding the camera and yeah. then you're out you know <laughs> doing your thing doing and having whatever. the time of your life but yeah it's uh it almost is forcing you guys to create so much that you're learning absolutely and you're putting yourself out there and you're continuing to put the content that yeah even watching some i don't follow his stuff religiously religiously but watching some of his content before this podcast i was like cam is a photographer but he's much more also just a creative I don't think he's going to just be a photographer for the rest of his life. He's going to be really somebody that, that wants to be in front of the camera. He wants yeah. to be maybe a, somebody directing. He yeah. wants to be designing. It, it you know, yeah. it's not just a photographer. This yeah. is somebody that is an all-around creative. I'm really glad you said that because I think a lot of people get so locked in to what they're doing. It's it's awesome to have a passion, but you need to keep your mind open to yeah. All of the other possible things that yeah. could happen for you yeah not to you but for you yeah and for the longest time i was like i'm gonna be the best music photographer of all time that's what i'm gonna do i had a vision board and all, all that jazz it was like music photography awards specific artists that i wanted to work with yeah. like studios like all this all this music photography stuff and then uh i actually had a conversation with anthony he was like yo you can do any like anything. I was like, oh, I guess you're right. I can literally do whatever. But I didn't necessarily know what that meant <laughs> until I moved in with Justin. Yeah. 
and now we're making jokes and having the best time ever every day and it's put me in this headspace of wow there's so much more i can do outside of photography than yeah. just than just being a shooter and it all still funnels back in mm-hmm. to you as a creative yep and i think what helps that too is that you're not getting heart and set yeah. on i need to shoot this show oh i don't get the show oh i'm screwed i don't have any photos to post yeah. no we're going to go shoot a vlog yeah. then we're going to go i'm going to do some behind the scenes stuff for him at that shoot yep. that we did for uh, him back in december yeah. yeah i can do it all it's just stuff like that man like yesterday um <laughs> oh man so we're we're moving into a house okay uh, He's in the uh, apartment complex right yeah, now, right? By so, USC. So we're moving. I don't know if this is like a certain thing or not, but we had to make IDs for myself because I'm not a USC student. So I, I was I've like, been like trying to wonder, like, how does Cam get around this <laughs> campus when he's kinda, not even a student? We finesse, man. It, it's it's funny. <laughs> the good thing about being a graphic designer, you guys yeah, know how to like, make that stuff. Photoshop <laughs> All comes day. in clutch. All day. All day. <laughs> Shout out to my graphic design teacher, sophomore year. You taught me everything I know. Um but yeah, so we're taking this photo, and I was like, yo, this looks kind of sick. Let's mess with it. And then I put like two Dragon Ball Z characters yep. on the sides of my heads that are like shooting into my ears. I'm like, wow, I'm so weird, but I, I wouldn't it. be in the headspace to do that if I was just thinking like music photography, music photography, music photography, yeah. music photography. It's like, just be a creative person. Yeah. Have fun. You're not overthinking it. No, not at all. And you don't even care. I'm going to throw this up on the IG. Nah. Whether, you know, some people might think I'm nerdy now, but. It's like, whatever. I got bedhead and the whole nine, but this makes me happy. Yeah. It goes right back to that thing of this makes me happy. So I'm going to put it out. Yeah. Whatever. Do you see something happening in the next six months, maybe a year that you really want to, you really want to do? Man. <sighs> yeah. Um. With these vlogs and with these jokes that we're making, it's a lot of premeditated ideas. Yeah. So we'll yeah. be we'll be in the living room one night, like, yo, we should make a bit about this, or yo, we should make a bit about this, mm-hmm. or we should do this in in the vlog tomorrow, or whatever. Um, and those ideas and those conversations have just really like triggered my interest in tv and like skits and and things of that nature so i think within the next six months i want to start like dabbling in in that creating your own would you would you be essentially the star of it like what do you mean by like skits like directing it you want to be so i want to it all mashes together right i want to try screenwriting Hmm. and if 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 i if i can do it that would be ideal Hmm. Like the dudes in Workaholics. Yeah. I was, I, Le- I, leverage I love YouTube that show. and then build it up. Yeah. Because that's like, how they started, right? Yep. Yeah, they started on YouTube. Yeah. So just something similar to that would just be so cool to me. I think it would be awesome. Like me and my friends yeah. are in an apartment. We drink beer every day. We have a great time with life. Yeah. And it turned into a TV show <laughs> that everyone watches and can relate to. I don't know how it's going to get that way. I don't know. I don't even know a darn thing about screenwriting, but like just the simple idea and being in that headspace to think that way yeah. is what is important right there. Do you think it's because you moved to LA that gave you the permission to stop thinking just specifically music photography? I know you said Anthony yeah. made the comment to you, yeah. you could do anything you want, but yeah. you think just being in LA has opened up your mind to the possibilities? I think being in LA has done a lot for me, but it's more so about the people I'm surrounded yeah. with. Um, a lot of people, a lot of kids too, like see LA and think it's like this wonderland of, mm-hmm. of fairy tales and, and million <laughs> dollar ideas. Everybody's driving in Beamers yeah. and Bentleys. It's like, bro, if you're in school, don't don't drop out unless you kind of know what, what you're going to do. Yeah. Like, you don't need to be here to get in that mindset. You just need to be surrounded by the people that have a similar mindset. Yep. You can be in the middle of corn chuck nebraska <laughs> and have a million dollar idea just the same way you could be in los angeles california and have a, a million dollar idea i think for me though the people that i was associating myself with in st louis just happened to move to la yeah and so i was like man that's well, where i want to go those are my people yeah I'm, I'm i'm learning from them i'm growing with them and that's just where i need why to not be. follow them yeah yeah so here we are yeah it makes sense mm-hmm. uh what scares you the most? Wow. 
That's a great question. Yeah. That is a really pressing question. Yeah. I think what scares me, what scares me the most, I think, uh, would be the idea of just, man, nah, I don't, I don't know. This is really tough for me. I'm going to sip this water. <laughs> take, take I'm going to think about it for a that's, second. Yeah. Man, we're going to get mean, back to it. You know what? That's. I try to ask questions, and that's the biggest compliment. I'm going to talk for a couple of seconds so you can think about Go it. Go for it. But uh, I, that's the biggest compliment when somebody says that's a really good question because I, I try to balance questions that tell your story, but then I also try to find questions that are going to really make you think on the spot. Like, yeah. What, like, real answers. I don't, you know, I'm not here just like, what what, what, what are you going to be? Where are you going to party next? Nah. Nah. That's not <laughs> what Purpose Eve is all nah. about. We want, we want the realness. For sure. Um, I'd say the one thing... I'm afraid of is not being a good host to my ideas. So it happens like naturally all the time. Like you'll think of something, you'll be like, oh, a travel neck pillow with Bluetooth earbuds. Next week you see something the exact same hmm. that's making millions of dollars or like w whatever it is, that's that really freaks me out because like if you get a good idea and you don't act on it that idea can just pass so, right by you right by. you see someone capitalize and you're like well crap, i should have done it i should have done it hmm. and that that is something that definitely freaks me out like having all these ideas and just, just not doing anything with them do you write them down or you just let them pass in in and out the ones that i really like uh i write down hmm. I, I think it's you should yeah you're kind of dumb if you don't in yeah. my opinion yeah because your ideas i think are, are unique to you um people may have like common thoughts and similar um ideas but the ones that just pop into your brain that didn't come from anyone except from yourself <laughs> and so why, why not Let's just write it down real quick if you find time to act on it and do it, act on it, uh, man, I think whenever I moved into Justin's, we weren't even vlogging. We were just homies. We were just chilling, whatever. I wasn't really doing a whole lot, actually, like wasn't too sure with what I was doing here still. And then one day he had the idea like, wow, we're hilarious. We should vlog this. Yeah. And it's been successful. And it just kept Again, going. it's it's continued to be yeah. great. Uh, yeah I, I think i think ideas are very key yeah and just the tough thing is knowing when when's the time and because yeah none of these ideas are just gonna happen you're yep. not just gonna show up at your doorstep oh yeah because you have to put in the work behind it you yeah. need to connect the right dots but mm -hmm. you know it's a balancing of trying i feel like trying out that idea and if it doesn't work then stop and then oh yep. this idea sounds better let's try it try it, try it. oh yeah. it's working let's keep going you can feel the pull too yeah you can really feel the pull and an idea doesn't have to be a product or like something physical that you're like giving someone. It could simply be like, I, I, I kind of want to play guitar hmm. or I kind of want to be a rapper or like, I kind of want to get into business or whatever it is. Like just try it for a while, like see where you go with it. Cause if you feel the pull, it, either you're you're still pulled to it yeah or there's just none anymore and you, you find the next thing naturally it just comes and goes yeah yeah what's the best piece of advice you've ever received the best and who was it from my uncle paul yeah um i have a lot of like well i used to i used to have like creative block and like I would trip over my work. I think a lot of people go through that. Yeah. It's like I, I would make something and then just be like, man, this isn't cool. Or like this isn't as good as it could, could possibly be. be. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, try not to like connect yourself to your work because you'll never, you'll never like it. <laughs> if you embody your work, you're never going to like it. Like you as a person and you as an artist should be two completely separate things that don't need to be intertwined because it'll just stress you out. Yeah. I texted him one day. I was like, yo, this keeps happening to me. Like, what do I do? I'll make something. I'll go shoot Kendrick Lamar and I'll take like really cool photos and then be like, ah, these suck. Yeah. What do I do? 
he was like man just just separate those feelings it happens to me every day it still happens to me and he's way older than i am of course and works with sports illustrated and nike and all these crazy companies um but i think that concept of separating who you are as a human being outside of what you do is very essential to just remaining balanced yeah. as a person because you're never gonna i don't think you ever fully are happy yeah with that product mm -hmm. even though like you said you're shooting kendrick lamar i mean a huge yeah. I mean, one of the biggest artists in the right. game right now and i'm sure the, the photos are great but to you you personally are like nah like, this nah. isn't so separating the artist side and you as a person are yeah. like this is my time hanging out with friends yeah. and the person that is the artist is a completely it's their com they're two different yeah. there's two different cams yeah um you, you can't get caught up in both hmm. yeah if you if you, if you were to write a book today yeah cam was about to sit down write this book that's out. another idea i started writing a book once did you i'm not kidding i started and then my com I get, my computer got ran over by a bus. So I was like, I thought nah, it was gonna be more of like I, I just pushed it to the side, nah. but you're, you're my computer for real got ran over by a bus, and I had like ten pages like of a book. Oh no! And I was like, nah, whatever. <laughs> well, well, here's the question then. Yeah. If if you wrote a book today, uh huh, what would you title it? Oh wow, that's cool. That's like, what would you title your your mixtape? Um, I would title it just truth, straight up. Truth. Truth. What's wrong with that? You know what I'm saying? Because that word to me, truth, is it's just very important because you always have to be 100 with yourself yeah always you can't fake who you are or what you're doing you can't fake anything because at the end of the day it's going to come around and bite you straight in the ass and yeah. you're not going to know what to do yeah i see a lot of people like on the internet or whatever trying to be something that they're not and that's never going to work <laughs> it's never going to work you may look really sick or whatever. I don't know what you do that for, but if you're not true to who you are as a person, nothing, nothing's going to work for you, dog. It's short term versus long term. You're going to get stuck yeah. in this lie that you built about yourself. And then you lose your identity completely to this thing that you built. And it's not even you anymore. So I think if I, if I were to write a book, it would just be truth. And the whole thing would be about like, staying true to you because yeah. a lot of people lose touch of themselves yeah i don't think a lot of people are, are very tapped in to who they are as people i completely agree it's like my name is blank and i do blank just just leave it at the first part my name is blank this is who i am yeah embody that be that and yeah. do that. And I feel like the people that are themselves the best are usually the ones that end up like succeeding. They come out on top. They always come out on top. You can't fake it. You yeah. never can fake being yourself. Yeah. And it, it seems that stems too back to your experience, obviously growing up, right? Yeah. When you were not, you weren't staying true to who you no, are. Not at all. You were being that person that everybody else wanted you to become. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, man. Hmm. Like what the world has, especially the internet. Yeah. The internet has just really built this thing of like, you got opportunity. Be, yep. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Because a lot of like, a lot of opportunity is created through social media, whatever. And your character, your persona, who you are is seen within that like first two seconds yeah. of like clicking on your stuff. Mm hmm. So why would you ever give someone like the false impression? It sucks that like you go into something most times knowing like, oh, I follow this person on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. So like I kind of know what they're going to be like. Why would you fake that? Yeah. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah, I like That's it. all I got to say like about it. that. What do, you, uh, 
What do you think Cam's purpose is then? My purpose is to inspire others and spread the message of peace, positivity, and love. Um, I don't think I would do anything that I'm doing if it weren't for my family and those who have supported me. And my only goal being here, like on this planet, is to just provide for anyone that needs it and for people that have just helped me so much because I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in right now without my mentors and th even the people I live with, like my, my parents, everyone that's helped me get to this current position in life. I just wouldn't be myself without that. Yeah. So I want to be that person that other people can sort of look to as someone that was true to themselves that is more than willing to do whatever they have to do to give that overall feeling back yeah and i think love is something that people are afraid of sometimes they are afraid of yeah i agree and you really can't be because at the end of the day i feel like that's that's one of the most pure emotions it's just it's love just love. for humans and and i have that for people and i want to give that to anyone that I come across is that feeling of like, wow, this kid rocks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he, he has inspired me in some way, shape or form to like keep going and keep pushing and keep continuing to be true to myself. Yeah. If you put the love out into the world, somehow it comes back it comes to you back. and it never hurts you to give yeah. love and support and to Definitely. positivity and the whole, for sure. That energy never can hurt you. Yeah. It's the reverse that can bite you in the ass. Oh, it might yeah. not be today, might not be tomorrow, next week, next month. Right. A couple of years. Yeah. It's going to come full circle. Yeah. And also, like, you never know what people are capable of. Yeah. You never know what anyone is going to do. So if you're talking smack on old boy down the block on this day, and you turn around two weeks later, and he's all of a sudden doing this crazy thing, well, you're an asshole now. Yeah. You messed up. Yeah. You're screwed. You're, sh you're completely screwed yeah. because now this person has that idea of you that you're just an asshole. Yeah. What's the point in that? Just be a good person. Just be a good dude. <laughs> like for real. It's, it's, a, not, it's, it's not as that simple hard. as that. It's not. It's really a not. A lot of people need to hear a million times to yeah. order to, to really understand that. Absolutely. And I think uh, a lot of people are like too hard nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. everyone's just really tough yeah. and no one likes to talk about the emotional stuff man that's that's super whack to me yeah just give yeah. give give love and and every everything's gonna work out i promise you that yeah yeah before i get into closing questions this is when i reverse the role i allow my guests to ask me any one question Ooh. could be anything you want to know about me yeah uh two rules one can't be directly about the podcast cool uh second rule can't be a question that i asked you today got you all right any question hmm can I, can I jock someone else's question that I saw in like an interview? Yeah. All right. Of course. Cool. Yeah. Do whatever hell you want. <laughs> All right. Cool. 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 If there is one thing that you could do that isn't possible now, but will be possible in 10 years, what would that thing be? Like me, as in that's not possible. In Whether the it's like there's not the technology, you don't have the resources, like, the circumstance isn't right like what is what is that what is that thing hmm. in like a futuristic sense yeah um it's not possible right now yeah i don't know if this is the, if this follow if this is correct but i don't see it as possible right now just because of like the timing in my life so mm -hmm. i think this is a legit answer yeah uh it would be to travel like the world. Yeah. Uh, go to Australia, go to Europe, go to Asia. I mean, just try to touch different parts of the world. And is it possible right now? Could I essentially run, slide the credit card, <laughs> get nah. on a flight tomorrow and fly out to Australia? Yes. But uh -oh. I understand that that would not make any sense at all. I got you. Okay. That makes I would sense. have to just completely like, 
stop this for a week. Yeah. And when I all this other stuff that I'm trying to do, it, it it just doesn't make sense. Right. The technology's there, obviously, all that. But something that I that I'm I really want to ha- do in ten years, and I hope this isn't like a lame answer, but really is is to travel. I think yeah. you gain so much perspective on the world from doing it, mm-hmm. and even just watching travel vloggers. Yeah. Uh, that shit inspires me very much. Like so. these filmmakers, uh, Sam Calder, yeah. uh, all these people that travel the world and create these experiences. Like you were saying earlier in the podcast about you want to take your photos and 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 give people a way to live through that experience. These yeah. people are doing that and they're creating these videos of just unbelievable content. And I'm living through it. I'm mm-hmm. just imagining what it's actually like to be there for sure. Uh, so I feel like traveling. I mean, yeah. I don't want to say that's an easy out, but it, it's truthful. And I just know that it, the timing isn't right in my life right now. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if there's like, I'm trying to think of something real on the spot that's completely out of technology wise. Right. I don't know. I'll do what you did and like talk for a little bit. So you can think about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the student uh, is now the teacher. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Um, I think that's really it, man. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 got to be it. It's just traveling. Yeah. And when the time's right, that, it's more of timing, I guess. Right? Like the For technology sure. and everything is there. It's just yeah. when does it actually make sense? I don't think like we should ever just stay in a spot. Yeah. I think like natural human instinct is just to go explore. Yeah. And what the heck is the point in being on this? big ass planet yeah, yeah if you're not gonna go see it yeah dog, like you gotta go just adventure just go yeah. go go to a different place experience a different culture and like maybe yeah. you'll learn something about yourself yeah that's that's how i feel about traveling yeah like, i want to do that so bad yeah eventually just like take a whole trip yeah around the whole whole the whole globe the whole thing just, just creating just content go. making stuff just bring my camera yeah backpack action yeah just get popping hey it'll happen Absolutely. it'll happen for the both of us it's just it's Heck just a yeah. matter of when does it when does it make sense Shit, i'll see you in tokyo bro <laughs> let's do it let's do it uh closing questions i want you to imagine there's a picture frame kind of a similar question to you yeah uh picture frame on the wall mm-hmm. you're in it 10 years from now cool where's that picture taken what's in that picture that picture is taken hmm repeat that question again so you got a picture frame with yep. a picture of you in it. Yep. Where is the picture taken? It's okay. ten years from now. Yeah. So you're thirty. Yeah. Where are you gonna be? What's around you? That's another great question. Ten years from now. Okay. Ten years from now. Ten years from now, I would like to think that I'm 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 getting it figured out. Yeah. <laughs> I got it figured out a little more so than I do right now. Ten yeah. years is a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, but I think for me personally, it'd be in Los Angeles, California. Yeah. I love it here. And what would be in the picture? Simply my crib, Mm -hmm. my dog. Yeah. Hopefully my wife. Yeah. Cause I'd be tight. Yeah. I'm not trying to be alone forever. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Maybe even a little guy, you know? Yeah. Just at that point little, in time. Little, little cam just running a, around. Just a little Niz. Like, little cam running around. With a little uh, Polaroid camera. Just, just, yeah, I think I think that's where I want to be when I'm 30. It's just still in the in the city that I've, I've kind of fallen in love with. I yeah. really like it a lot here. It's yeah. been the best time I've had, yeah. like, ever. Um, and my family is just very important to me and my being and i want to have one of my own one day yeah so i think simply just here with a with family and a dog yeah and a dog <laughs> it's like that's very simple cut to the no. point like maybe i have more tattoos or something but mm. yeah that's that's what my answer was on uh my i did i did a reverse the role podcast i had my my roommate interviewing that's yeah. exactly what it is be in la surrounded by family friends yeah and just uh and just having a good time right oh uh, the ultimate picture would be like I don't really care about the size of my crib. I don't. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I really don't. As long as it's like got cool stuff on yeah, the inside. Absolutely. You know, it could be like huge or it could be small. I would be satisfied either way. Yeah. But I want like all my homies, like all the homies, on my roof or something. Yeah. And then just me 
and, and my wife, my dog in the front. At the just, entrance. Just right like here. Thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick just little thumbs up. Everyone on the roof, like shotgunning beers <laughs> and like whatever, just, just going crazy on the roof and then just. I love it. I love yeah. it. I'm Where? Take that picture. I promise you. You're going to take it? <laughs> yeah, I swear. With the I drone? Am. With the hey, drone? I'm Go back to my old ways, get my tripod, <laughs> click the button, run out in front of it. That's how you stay true to yourself. Yep. That's how you stay true to yourself. Absolutely. Where can people find you on social media if they don't already follow you? I'm at everything. Um, Cam Niz, C-A-M-N-I-Z-Z. Don't get it twisted with one Z or an underscore. <laughs> it's two Zs. Two Zs. Yep. Everywhere. Instagram. Everywhere. Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Twitter. Um, yeah, uh, I'll yeah. have you. I'll have you all tagged up uh, all right, cool. in the socials. Before I ask the final question, yeah. uh, thank you for coming in today. Thank you I, for having me. Yeah, man, it's. Uh, I was already excited for this podcast because we've bumped shoulders enough, and we know we know what we're each doing, yeah. uh, each other are doing. But uh, just the little fact of knowing that you had heard, like I said, in the beginning of this podcast, Gibson's podcast, and that brought you some type of value is crazy to me because that is literally a year ago from now and i was still so early in my journey and now i'm here connecting with you all this time has passed yeah we're both completely different people from where we were a year ago but yet somehow some way we collide um and i really respect what you're doing and all the stuff you have going with justin and anthony and uh you're you're very humble you're very genuine and you put out whether your content makes you laugh, whether it's you guys <laughs> just screwing around, whether it's you know maybe something serious, it's it's all good energy to the world. So I appreciate you and I Thank appreciate you. you coming and taking the Bro, time for this. That's so mutual, absolutely, for real. absolutely. Um, last question for you: Somebody that's listening doesn't know what their passion is, doesn't know what their purpose is, yeah. they can't figure that out. Mm-hmm. What's your best two to three pieces of advice? Man, one, believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. I was actually going to say I have one more thing to say, and okay. that is believe in yourself. Okay. Don't let any outside force tell you or keep you from doing anything that you want to do. Yep. Whatever it may be, believe in yourself too. If you don't know what that thing is, just trust that it's going to come mm-hmm. because it will come. Because if if you're anything like me or anyone that has been on this podcast, you're probably like a pretty creative person that has had battles like internally with with kind of who they are you'll get it figured out i promise that you will eventually get it figured out and number three this comes from my dad try and have a plan just try have a a little slight idea of what you want to do because i moved out here and had no idea what i was doing and it was the worst thing ever (laughs) but um (laughs) try learn from example (laughs) yeah dad you were right I'm I'm telling you this to your face right now. You were right and I was wrong. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> try and have a plan. Like think think of things that you can do in a step by step process to get to where you want to be with what you're doing. And uh, th- those are my those are my three keys, major keys to success. That's it, right there. Cam, been, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank man. you for having me, man. Absolutely, absolute pleasure. We'll catch you guys next time. See you. Peace.